What's in the box is the latest in Valve technology. This has come about from a partnership between Korg and Noritake. Now, Noritake are a Japanese manufacturer of vacuum fluorescent displays. So what they've done is they've taken that technology, applied it to the regular valve that you'd find in a, a guitar preamp, a hi-fi preamp, so they can miniaturize it and reduce the power consumption. This particular one comes from Pete Miller. I'll post a link in the description below where you can get these from. It's got some cushioning just underneath the valve before the PCB, and that helps reduce some of the microphonic noise. So like on a normal valve, you've got the anode, which is just in the center there, and then the grid is around the outside of that. The filament runs directly on the top. So we've got the data sheet here from Korg for the new tube. See, it's a twin triode, it's directly heated. So the, the main feature of the new tube is the reduced operating voltage. So it can run from as little as five volts, maximum of 80 volts. The anode power dispersion is 1.7 milliwatts, which again is a lot less. Filament runs at 0.7. So if we turn through, We've got the physical layout of the new tube inside and the pin set in. Korg have included an example circuit. So what we've got on here is the first stage is a MOSFET buffer. The reason for the buffer is that when the new tube is running under 40 volts supply, the grid requires a positive bias. So without a buffer there, it would actually draw current from whatever you were connected into it. You can see the direct heating and there's an output stage there, another MOSFET one. So with the 30 supply range, it gives a figure of 17 dBs. I'm gonna have a go building this, but I'm gonna use an op-amp for the buffer. See how that works out. Unlike a normal vacuum tube, it is super linear through up to, you know, up to around 20K. So it'll be interesting to see what effect that has on the sound. Another noteworthy point is that the frequency response versus temperature is very close. It'd be interesting to see if there's any applications for the new tube where silicon may not be able to be used because of the operating temperature. So we'll get the new tube on a breadboard and build the example circuit and see what sort of results we get.